holding here. And what actually I have here in my hand is a peanut. So what do you think when you see a peanut? Some of you may think of peanuts, peanut butter or a snack, energy snack, you know, a food. Some of you may think of the circus or an elephant. Have you heard that elephants eat peanut? No, most of you may have heard that. Actually, that's a myth. In reality, that doesn't happen. It started in a cartoon. In any way, what I'm here to tell you is that this little peanut one day may provide the treatment for cancer, maybe pancreatic cancer, or breast cancer, or prevent Parkinson's disease, or providing an alternative for obesity treatment, all in this little peanut. Have you ever questioned yourself where do medicines come from? You think scientists create all this in the laboratory? Some scientists may do that. But if we think about medicines in general, a lot of those come from nature. So actually, if we look at something as complex as cancer, about 50% of all drugs that are being used for cancer treatment derive from a natural product, derive from a natural source, and plants provide these natural products. And in fact, this is not new. You know, people have been using plants for centuries, even thousands of years, to create medicines. And if we think about some common medicine like aspirin that originated from the willow tree, or, for example, morphine, no, a strong painkiller, all that come from the poppy plant, or some other ones, complex chemicals like taxol that derive from the Pacific U that is currently used in many different types of cancers. But, so that's not new. Scientists and people have been exploring using these chemicals as potential medicines. But the novelty is now that there are so many other chemicals that people have not explored, scientists have not explored, because those chemicals are only produced when plants are stressed. And that's right, plants can get stressed. And I'm not meaning by screaming at the plant and yelling at the plant, the plants get all anxious, right? What I'm meaning with that is, plants normally are exposed to the environment, they're counteracting effects of pathogens, bacteria, fungus, viruses. So what do we do humans when we're exposed to all these things? When we're exposed to a bacteria or a fungus? we have an immune system, a defense system, that will create antibodies. But like what plants do when they're exposed to bacteria and fungus, when they're stressed by this? What they do is they make chemicals, okay? So we go back to our little peanut. Again, the peanuts that we eat, they're not making all these chemicals. The peanuts need to be stressed to make this. They need to be stressed by the fungus and produce these chemicals. And with the stress, it will produce all this arsenal of chemicals that now we're studying as potential new medicines. So what do I do when I'm stressed? Some of you, when you're stressed, may play sports, may read a book. Some of you may actually uh, grow a garden. But what do I do when I'm stressed? I go to the piano. I sit at the piano and relieve my stress. I'm just not just read music and play the piano. I create music in the piano. So let me tell you how all this started. Uh, I grew up in Peru, in the city of Lima, a really big city, about 10 million people. And I remember when I was very young, very early, my, my parents worked so hard to give me the best education, but also to expose me to other things besides school, to sports, to art, and to music. So when I was about nine years old, I started learning how to play the piano. I started by ear for a year. And then after a year, I decided that uh, I wanted to play some classical music, so I got another t-shirt that showed me how to read music. And I only took another year more, and then I wanted to play more and more, more, more complex things, but my t-shirt only allowed me to do scales on the piano. And that was actually kind of boring for me, so I decided to just do it on my own. Just a few uh, weeks ago, I ran into this article that was actually shared on my Facebook. And it said that science says that piano players' brains are very different than anybody else's. When I started reading this article, I felt so connected to it. Everything that it says, I felt that it's describing myself. It says that uh, piano is very early. 
because they learned to use both hands. Huh? We had to play with our left hand, our right hand to create something, to play the piano. We are our ability, our very balanced people. We are really good at multitasking, at doing many different things that are not related. And I always felt myself very identified with that. So when I was very little, I was always, in addition to playing the piano, I was always curious to know how things work, how nature works, how plants do things. And something that intrigued me all the time was about the use of plants in medicine. So growing up in Peru, whenever I was sick, my mother would say, we oh, have a stomach ache, you need to boil some leaves in water and drink the water. Or you have some sore throat, you will also have another seeds of a plant and then put it in boiling water and drink that water. Or even for some more complex things like uh, kidney stones. Some of you may have been experiencing that kidney stones very hard, very, very painful. And we have a plant that can break those stones called chanca piedra in Spanish. In English, uh, is the another plant. So all these things work. And they, I experienced those myself. I experienced, I know this works. So I wanted always to find out how these things work. So that curiosity took me to study a career in biology in Peru. And then I was fortunate to come to the United States to continue my graduate studies. And in my graduate studies, they were focused on plant sciences. So I learned how plants function. So I got a degree in plant physiology. And I learned how plants make all these chemicals. So about 12 years ago, there was a chemical that became very, very popular in the news because it was associated with the health benefits of drinking red wine. And it was present in the red wine because it was present in the grape. But the grape will only make this chemical when it was exposed to the fungus. Again, the stress made the grape to produce this chemical. So this chemical got a lot of popularity because it was associated with potential uh, health benefits uh, to humans. And there was a really big need to make it. And interesting, this chemical was also produced in the peanut. But the peanut only made this chemical when the peanut was attacked by the fungus. So I decided what I can use to make a lot of this chemical. So I, I used some of the strategies that I learned when I was in graduate school, and I used just the roots of the peanut. So I used these roots to produce this chemical. I was able to find that I can make a lot of this chemical. But in this process of looking for these objectives that I have to make resveratrol, I found there were some many other things that were present during this search. And when I started exploring those other chemicals, I found out that those other chemicals were even more important than my initial goal. So all these other things that appear as a result of the stress have in other anti-cancer properties, other properties that have other beneficial properties for human health. So then I realized at the end, all this chemistry that the plant was producing in response to the stress have all these good health benefits for humans. So again, so what do I do when I'm stressed? When I'm stressed, I create music. And what I would like to do today, I would like to share with you something that I'll create right at this moment. So I don't practice this before. All my music is impromptu. I just made it up right at this moment. So I will play the piano for you. I remember my dad, uh, whenever I play, he had a story in his mind. Let's see what you can hear when I play this next piece. Thank you. 
thank you. So what I just did, I just made it up at this moment. So most of the time, I never heard, able to play the same thing all the time because I just made it up at this instant. So I never thought that when I was learning music, when I was very little, I was going to be able to create and compose music. So what I want to leave you with this message here is that sometimes you need to challenge yourself. Sometimes you have a passion. And most of us are going to be stressed at many parts in our life. And you can channel that stress to create something positive. It could be whatever you're doing, painting, writing. You can transform that stress into something positive. Always look beyond your initial goal. Now, I was focused on creating and looking for this chemical resveratrol, but in my path for resveratrol, I found all these other chemicals that have taken me to all these different directions. And next time that you see a peanut, I hope that you have more respect for the peanut because it may provide a medicine for the future. And remember, great things can result from a little stress. Thank you.